This is your one and only Firespark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another exciting Conan Exiles video. Today we're going to do some Mushi code editing in Pippi. Let's get to it. So I did some Mushi editing the other day in a live stream and a bunch of people requested it. So I figured I'd do a video. We'll see how it does and if it does well, I'll do more. So if you're not sure what it is, it is the Pippi mod. If you are in admin mode, you go over to your control panel here. You go to building and type in T-H-E right here is what you want it's a thespian you place the thespian down and then when you hit E on them or whatever you have as your activation key you see here it says launch Mushi editor this only works if you're in admin mode if you're not in admin you can't see the launch Mushi editor so you click that and then you are presented with this screen here so what we're going to code today is a combination lock what can you use that for all kinds of stuff we'll cover some of that once we code the lock so the first thing that we're going to do is go to dialogue you need some type of dialogue option to tell the person what this is all about so you know blah 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 some dialogue then we need some options so what we're going to do is we're going to go over here we're going to click new option new option new option new option we're going to do four we're going to drag those and keep everything nice and neat so we know where everything is and we're just going to go like that and then we're going to connect this to all of these Like so. And you can put whatever you want here. It doesn't matter. You could just put like enter the code or whatever. You get what this dialog box does. Okay. So there you go. Now we're going to do the code. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put some numbers here. We're going to go one, two, three, and four. Okay. So now that we've done this, we want to just go over here, save real quick, just in case anything happens, crashes, whatever, uh, you have it saved in that thespian. Now what we need to do is we need to add a bunch of variables. So we're going to then create four action nodes like so. And we're going to line those up here with each of these. And now we're going to go through here and we're going to connect all of these to each of the action nodes. Now we're going to go over here and we're going to use a character variable. Now what this does is this binds this variable to the character. That's why you want to select this one because if you select something like local or global, if someone puts in half the code and then another person comes along and they put in the rest of it, it's not going to have the right outcome. So you want it bound to each individual character. We're going to leave all this blank for just a second. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we're going to get a bounce node and we're going to get another bounce node and we're going to put it over here. With the current setup, what would happen is if we click one of these, it's going to select that and then it's going to disappear. What we need it to do is to bounce back and re-highlight them all again so that you can pick the number again. And I can demonstrate that. So if we close this and we make her a dialogue thespian. You have to have a dialogue thespian in order to see the Mushi code. Click apply and close. We come over here, enter the code, press one. You can see that it all disappears. That's not what you want. Once you've done that and there are dialogue thespian, all you have to do is just hold down E the next time you want to edit and then select edit. We're going to go back into the editor here. So we want this to be a bounce. We want this to be a land. This needs to be the same number here as it is over here so it knows to land on it so we're going to hold shift and click the plus one time that's going to give us 10 and then click one more now we want to connect all of these to the bounce node like that and then we want to connect this bounce node to all of these outputs again so what you could do is just connect it to here and it'll start the thing again, but we don't need her to say the dialogue a second time. It, do, it doesn't really matter. You At this point, you already know what you're doing. We just need it to bounce back and re-highlight these numbers again. Now, if we save this and we close, apply close, and we activate her again, you can see that the numbers show back up. And I connected those in the wrong order. You want to make sure you see it swap there because of the order in which I connected those. If that happens, just click on all of your lines and break them and select them in order. So one, two, three, and four, and then save it and then close it. And now it won't change and we've entered the code. 
but we haven't actually done anything. Those are buttons that do nothing currently. So we're gonna go back into the editor and we're gonna give these a value. We need to name this variable something. So we're just going to name it code. And what you wanna do is just copy and paste that into all of these. Now, right now they're all set to addition and you can do that, that's just fine. It doesn't matter. Basically, you wanna do some math here. You can make it as complex as you want. So we could make one of these a subtraction. So now it's going to subtract that amount. So now what I like to do, we're, we can make these whatever number you want, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to make them one, two, three, and four just to keep things super simple. But once again, it doesn't matter. Nobody's going to see what these are. They don't need to be one, two, three, or four. They need to know what combination of one, two, three, and four they need to hit. So now we have one, two, three, and four. This is going to add three. This is going to add one. This is going to add four. This is going to subtract two. So now that we have that, let's go in and let's set a reset. So let's put another option here and we're just gonna type in reset. And then we're just going to connect it here. And they'll if you connect it here, they'll see reset right from the get-go. You don't have to have them see that right from the get-go. What you can do is connect it to the bounce. Then it'll only show up after they've hit a number. So let me, let me show you how that looks both ways here. So we connect that like that. And then we're gonna add another action node here. And we're just gonna connect that up. We're gonna go to character variable. We're just going to copy and paste code in here after we set this to equals, and then we're going to have it equals zero. And we're going to connect it over here to the bounce, and then we're going to connect the bounce to the reset like so and save it. Now what happens is, is when they press in this code, it's going to bind a number to the, the individual character. If they mess up, you want them to be able to hit the reset. So they have the reset button. If they hit that, it sets the code back to zero. So right now, when we save and close this and we talk to her, you can see we already have the reset. So we put in the number and then that's it. It has a variable that we can actually view. If we go into our admin panel here and we select our character, there is a button down here that says character variables. You click that. You can see we have two separate codes here. We have one that shouldn't even be there, but then we have our current one, which is code, and that's negative three right now. So if you don't want them to see reset until they've actually hit a button, we can actually fix that really easily. All we have to do is go back in here, break this line right here. Now they won't see reset until they've put in a button. So we close, save, close, talk to her again, no reset button. We hit a button, resets there, we can hit reset, we back out. We talk to her again. It's not there until we hit a button, hit reset. I like them seeing reset right from the get-go, so I'm just going to leave it like so. Now we need the activation button. So once you enter the code, it needs to check for the code. So what we're going to do is add another option. We're going to label that button as enter. We're going to hook it to both of these nodes here. And then we're going to give it a check. So we want to go to condition. We're going to drag our condition here and then we're going to go to character variable and we're going to set it to equals. So it's going to check code and make sure it is equals to whatever number we want it to be. So this is where you need to do the math and then write down the code that you're going to give out to people or write it down so you don't forget it. So I'm going to keep it really simple and we're just going to say that the code is four two and three which means it will be five they can honestly put that in whatever way they want to put it in they could do two three four or whatever you just tell them the code and then they don't know the math behind it so it's almost impossible for them to figure out what the final number is because they don't know in the background if it's subtracting if it's adding or what so we're going to put in five is our variable. Now, the other thing is that this code could just be four and one. But once again, they don't know that. Okay, so we needed to do a thing if it's true and to do a thing if it's false. So we're going to have it go to action if it's true. And we're going to have it uh, just do a dialogue if it's false. 
Okay, so this action could be literally anything you wanted. It could be give them a kit, give them an item, whatever you want the action to be. You could have it trigger to open a door. So you just put down an egress, which is another tool that's in Pippi. You give it the name, whatever name you want it, and you put that name here and it'll open the door if they put in the code. You can have it give them a rank or remove a rank, whatever you want it to do. We're just gonna have it uh, give us some funds. So it's gonna give us one gold. Now, if it fails, she's just gonna tell you that you failed. And we can also have some dialogue here that if it's true, so uh, we can put a dialogue button or a dialogue here and connect it up like that and type something like, enjoy your money, whatever, it doesn't matter. So she's just gonna give the funds. We're gonna go into another action node here and then we're going to just close this out. And then if it fails, what we're gonna do is we're going to reset the code. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did here. So we're going to go to action, we're gonna to go to character variable, we're going to type in code, and we're gonna make sure that it's set to equals zero, and we're gonna connect that up and then what we're going to do is we're just going to connect this to the close dialog as well. So it just closes the dialog box and you have to talk to her and start all over. Now, if we save this and we close it and we talk to her, so we're going to reset first to make sure our code is zero because I don't remember what it was. We're going to put four, one, enter. And now she gave us gold. It should have told us that it gave us gold, but for some reason it didn't. If you want to make sure that they know that you got it, and also we didn't get the wait for her to say that we got our money. So we can go over here to do something like this. So let's go back over here. Let's launch the editor because I forgot a wait node. Normally you would want a wait node right here so that before it closes the box. So we can, uh, let's drag this over here. So we can go to another action node here and we can do a chat message and then we can make it local. You give this a name, it's whatever, and you give it her name. This way they'll know that they got a gold just in case that it doesn't show up that they did, although it should have. And then uh, we can just put, I like to put an option. You can also put a wait, but if you put an option, that means they have to click it to move on. And that's normally what I like to do, but we could also just do something like a wait node and then, you know, change the amount of seconds so that she says, enjoy your money. And then it just naturally closes. I'm just going to put thanks here like this, and then we'll just connect this back up here. Okay. Now we're going to save. We're going to close. And we're going to talk to her again. We're going to reset. So four, one, enter, enjoy your money. And if we go, thanks, it closes. If I hit enter, you can see local, it said you got one gold. And that's pretty much all there is to it. You can do whatever you want after this, once you have this initial part set up. So if we talk to her again here and we just do like four, 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 three, two, I don't know, blah, blah, whatever, we hit enter. Um, it just closed because once again, we did not, uh, I always fail to, to put the wait node or the action node here. I always forget about that. So we can, uh, break this. We'll just put another option here real quick, connect those up like that and, uh, type in whatever you want here. That's the option that's going to show up to close it. You could just literally put close dialogue there if you want. So let's do it again. Blah, 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 blah. Enter. You fail. Click it. It closes. So I have a setup like this. I use it to auto rank people. Once again, you can use it to do whatever you want. You can make it part of a quest where they have to find the, the numbers and then they have to figure out what order to put them in, or you can have it set up to automate something that you only want a certain group of people to be able to automate whatever you want. All you have to do is change this part right here to have it do whatever you want it to do. And then for if they fail, have this part is your failure option. You can kill the people. You can go over here and if you want to punish them for getting it wrong, you can go to something like action and then modify stat. And if we hook this up like this, hook it to the closed dialog. Now it finishes it. Now we just need to set their stats. So their current health, and then just put like minus nine, 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 nine. And that's going to kill them. If they get the code wrong, you have all of these different options here that you can choose from. You can actually like take money from them. If you want, you could remove their funds. You can remove a quest, remove a recipe. You could give them recipes for 
getting the code right. You get the idea. I'm going to stop blabbering on about it, but that's the code. That's how you do it. That's how easy it is to set up a combination code using the Mushi editor. If you like these kind of guides, let me know down in the comments. Okay. Well, I hope you all enjoy this. That is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you'd like to join my elite crew Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment. And just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.